Hi everyone, welcome back. So I think most people probably know Futurama. It's the cult animated sitcom from creator Matt Groening, who's perhaps better known for creating, you know, that other animated sitcom, Disenchantment. Now I could probably make a whole video, or maybe several, about Futurama and definitely The Simpsons, but I don't really want to talk about the show today. Instead, I want to talk about Futurama the video game. This was released for the PS2 and the Xbox in 2003, and what's interesting about this game is that it was released only a month before the legendary Matt Groening media tie-in game, The Simpsons Hit and Run. I say Matt Groening media tie-in game like it's some sort of category. In fact, in North America, both games were actually under the same publisher. And with Hit and Run being the classic game that it is, it might be reasonable to expect Futurama to also be pretty good. But it's not exactly. In all fairness, the Futurama game isn't terrible. But, yeah, it's not great either. I remember back in the olden days, called the mid-2000s, I used to play a lot of games on the original Xbox. But aside from a handful, I actually didn't have that many full games. What I had instead were a whole load of demo discs, which each had like five or six demos on them. And I'd sit there and I'd play the same demo over and over and over again. In fact, I'm starting to think that the reason why I have problems with having such a short attention span is I grew up playing a demo for like 20 minutes and then moving on to another one. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, on one of these many discs there was a demo for Futurama. And I remember it was the third level, which is Old New York, and on that level you like emerge from a subway and there's a basketball court there and you have to shoot a bunch of guys. And I never, ever got past that level. And I know what you're thinking, but George, most young kids are bad at video games. No. No, stop. No. I was really really bad at games. But now it's 2021, and I'm older, and I'm wiser, subjectively, and I'm determined to not only beat old New York, but finish the entire game. So in this video, I'd like to take a look back as I torture myself playing the Futurama video game. I just want to quickly say, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do consider clicking that button. It really does mean a lot to me. All right, back to the video. So the plot of the game is that the professor sells Planet Express to mum, or mom but that isn't really a word that ever sounds good in my accent. And that makes it so that she's able to enslave the world. So the Professor, Fry, Bender, and Leela all flee planet Earth to try and stop her, somehow. In the tutorial, you collect the Professor's tools, and it brings up the first problem that I really had with the game, which is that the controls are pretty bad. Futurama really suffers from that old school 3D game control system. Back before there was like a standard control scheme for everything, so every game had their own separate control system that you had to figure out, like using B to jump instead of A, or making you go into first person mode to A, or making you take out the dance dance revolution mat or the meter wide mech controls to access the game's menu. Maybe I made that last one up. This really isn't helped by the fact that the camera is just horrendous. There were so many times where I just straight up could not see where I was going because I walked through a door and the camera just decided to stay on the other side. Whoa! It's an old Galactic X-14 ship. Yeah. Yeah, really cool. One thing that I do like about this game, however, is all the different loading screens that pop up throughout it, which I guess is kind of a weird thing to say. So what's your favorite part about Futurama? Oh dude, the loading screens, they're sick. But honestly, the best part of the game in general is all of these different areas where they've managed to show off some of the great writing that exists in the show. In fact, if this game didn't have the Futurama brand behind it, there would be basically no reason to play it. And I think the place where the game shines best is actually not in the gameplay, but instead in the cutscenes. The game features the original voice actors from the show, and the story was written by real Futurama writers. Matt Groening and David Cohen were pretty involved with the game, and many people consider it to be a sort of lost episode. That's helped as well by the fact that the game was actually released after the show had already been cancelled for the first time. You play as Fry, Bender, and Leela, who all have different abilities, and there's also an extra cameo level, the Zoidberg. Because after all, why not Zoidberg? The first set of levels you play as Fry, and the very first proper level of the game, like an alarming amount of video games, is a sewer level. I'm getting flashbacks to another game I talked about on this channel. The Fry levels are all typically based around shooting, with some occasional jumping puzzles. And I guess I didn't pay enough attention to the tutorial, because I went through the whole sewer level thinking, why is this so difficult? 
why am I finding it so hard to kill enemies? And then I realized that I spent the whole first level using the charged attack, so I was basically making it way harder for myself. But I did get through that level and the level after it. And then I finally emerged from the subway into old New York, the demo level that plagued me as a child. One of the things I remember from this level is that Fry says some voice line at the beginning, and as a child, I could never figure out what he was saying. It was something like, ah, old New York, here's the place where I first something something. And in fact, when I decided to make a video on this game, that line was the first thing that I remembered about it. But now all these years later, I guess the mystery can finally be solved. So what does he say? Ah, uh, old New York, over there's where I first got mugged. Homeless people. Oh, oh, okay, it's actually pretty clear. Here's the place where I first got mugged. To be honest, I think when I was a child, I just didn't know what getting mugged was. But the question still remains, can I be old New York? Yeah. Yeah, I can. It was pretty easy, actually. In fact, the bit that I was stuck on only took me like five minutes. So I finished that level, and finally I beat the fry section of the game, which ends with you using this like weird robotic chicken walker thing to rampage through the streets of New New York. And that brings up the second part of the game where you play as Bender. So both Leela and Bender are beat em up characters, meaning that they don't have any weapons, as opposed to Fry, who's a shoot em up character. And generally, I found the M upping you do as Bender the most enjoyable part of the game. Except for the jumping puzzles. Because the thing is, the controls in this game aren't good enough to do all the precise jumps it wants you to do, so you end up having to do the same part over and over and over again. Also in this part of the game I started getting really fed up with the voice lines. Don't get me wrong, having the original Futurama voice actors in the game is really cool, but when the character repeats the same five jokes again and again, somewhere around the 70th time it starts to get a little old. This is even easier than stealing! This is even easier than stealing! This is even easier than stealing! I think this is even easier than stealing. Also, completely unrelated, but I just wanted to point out that one of the Bender levels has like a Star Wars style Sarlacc pit, or maybe like a Dune sandworm everywhere I go. I see his face. There's a cool Indiana Jones or maybe like Crash Bandicoot style auto scroller. And the Bender levels finish with the professor being captured and the three other characters going to the surface of the sun to get help, which is where the Leela levels begin. Leela's a pretty similar character to Bender. She doesn't have any weapons, so she just uses punches and kicks, and she also has a dodge roll. And it was at this point in the game where I encountered what would become the bane of my existence. Worse than the jumping puzzles, worse than the camera, it was these guys. All of the enemies that Leela encounters are skeletons, and most of them are okay, but the guys with the bombs are just so annoying. All they do is run at you and then explode. I honestly have no idea how you're supposed to defeat them without taking damage, because you're not fast enough to run away, and I can't seem to dodge them, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I am just still bad at games. Completing the Leela levels brings you to the Zoidberg cameo, which is another auto-scroller, and is also incredibly frustrating. After that, the characters then gain access to a time machine, which they use to go back in time to before the game happens and before the professor signs the contract to give Mum Planet Express to try and stop that from happening. It might be a little bit confusing, so I created this handy diagram in case you're having difficulty following. There's nothing too special to say about the finale. It's three levels where you play as each character and one of them is a boss fight. If anything, I feel like the boss fights are one of the weaker parts of the game, but I do like the way that the game ends. The deal is off! Oh, well, how about if I throw in this hat? Deal. So even after defeating the final boss, the professor just decides to sign the contract anyway, which leads the characters to be stuck in an endless time loop. And after the credits roll, it just starts the game over again. So I guess technically you're supposed to keep playing this game forever, which, I mean, it's great value for money. And so finally, after, I don't know, maybe like four hours? I did it. I beat Futurama. But you already knew that, because otherwise, why would I have made a video on it? Can you imagine if I'd quit halfway through? Come on, I would have been some sort of Futurama fraud. Not on this channel. You know, I did sort of enjoy playing the game, but I think if it wasn't for the fact that I was making this for a video, I would have quit a long time ago. The game does have its good moments, and I think the voice acting and the writing is great. But I think much like the show itself, 
the game is definitely a still enjoyable, but somewhat inferior alternative to a modern classic. I hope you've enjoyed watching me talk about my experiences with the Futurama game. I really like delving into these media tie-in games, and the PS2 era is full of them. Hey, I mean, if there's an audience for it, maybe I'll start streaming these sorts of games on Twitch, and you can experience these sorts of things firsthand. I also want to say thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I know I'm not exactly all the way up there in the top tiers of YouTube, but I mean it when I say it really does mean a lot to see people reacting so positively to my videos. I've got loads more stuff planned, and I'm really going to keep pushing to make my videos bigger and better. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or a comment, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you have any ideas for anything else you'd like to see me cover in the future, please let me know, and as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>